Hello, good, good evening, good afternoon, <laughs> good morning. Uh, it depends where you are. Um, I hope you are doing well here today. And yeah, uh, we'll be today. Um, we are discussing uh, about the topic to bring, and we decided to talk to extend uh, a little bit more about uh, the testing uh, topic since we were talking on the last two sessions ago and and it was very short for 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 a so large uh, topic uh, to be discussed and yeah actually we we can we uh, were talking how many um, stories we can <laughs> talk around this topic uh, at least and uh, and how we can actually improve our quality uh, on the delivery process so so help me with that. I want to call my friend, uh, Pedro Cavalero. Hey, Pedro, how are you? Hey, hello, Hugo. How are you? Nice to be here. Well, yeah, testing is a nice topic. Uh, actually, I will be talking about this topic tomorrow. Oh, no, uh, after tomorrow, right? In TDC, I'll be, I'll be placing a, a talk there about testing. Of course, CDC has lots of very nice topics, but uh, well, I like this topic just not only because uh, it is interesting, but because it helps our lives. Right? <laughs> we when we that work with code every day, we feel that when we when we don't have tests, we suffer. So yeah, <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I think not just ourselves. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that our audience also have uh, good stories. And if you are, or do you have some questions or some good stories to share, please uh, type here on the chat. We can start talking about that as well. And uh, also I want to call my good friend here, uh, uh, um, our Java champion and AI specialist, Hey, Mani, how are you? Hey, good. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Pedro, how are you, Hugo? Thanks for having me over. I hope you can hear me well. Yeah, yeah I hear you well. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Sorry, there was a little bit of a, a delay in my signing up, but here we are finally. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the last session we had about testing and, uh, you know, carrying it forward from there. And that'll be awesome. I think we've got a whole list of things we want to cover. So, uh, you know, let's see how far we get with it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and last time we talked about uh, testing, I think uh, Bruno gave us a, a very interesting point of view about how we have to change our mind, actually, about testing, especially when we are talking about, uh, oh, I will take more time to implement something and deliver something with testing. And if we keep with that in mind, it will be very difficult to actually uh, make it possible in your, in your project and actually have the benefits in the in, 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 a, in a more uh, uh, long term, uh, not so long term, right? But uh, I think, Pedro, I actually have some good story that can actually uh, bring this in a very recent, right, Pedro? <laughs> can you share a little bit about that? It was so fun that uh, it's so recent and so connected with the topic today. Yeah, I was, uh, I was talking about that uh, last week. Uh, Last week, on a, it was on Thursday, uh, and uh, we were releasing a, 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 our our feature, right? And the feature has some kind of connect, uh, uh, integration with a third party, of course. And then we, but it did, uh, uh, when we release and I try to make it work, we realize, oh, it's not it's not working. And then we take a look on the code and look at the monitoring. Monitoring is a very good topic. We have uh, we are looking at the monitoring things, and I see, man, what's happening here? It's not correct. It's it should be working, right? And I saw, and I realized, look at the code and the logs, and say, okay, there is some problem in validation. I take a look on that, and I took a look on that, and I realized, oh, that code has like three more than three months old. And I say, oh man. And I say, yeah, but it, well, three month old code should be should be right, okay? Never, never, I never had problem with that. All right, okay. I take took a look, took a look. Man, it took like one hour 
looking at that code and I realize, okay, uh, there is a variable, a strange variable here. It the variable was named like user date, but actually it was not user date when you look at the code. It was not user date, it was user data. And I, oh, and when that click came to me and I saw, oh my God, there are lots of places that it was not, uh, it was not user date that you need to use, it was user data and vice versa. And I look at the same man. Whoa, this is actually actually when you when you look at it and you realize that you say, Oh man, that is completely wrong. And it's oh it's never it should never work. And you think, oh man, it's been three months. It it was running before. Why it, it, but it's not working. What happened? And then we realize that oh god, <laughs> that code never worked and that code never was never tested. I say, oh god, it was never oh man, do do we have a new test here? No. Do we have any test, any integration test that should test it here? Well, we had many new integration tests that should test that code but that code was an integration with a third party and that third party there is a, some variable that says okay if you are running in staging in stage environment we should not call that third party because we don't have a test environment for that third party so in our in our staging area, that code was being skipped. And in our integration tests area, you, you, that code was being skipped. And I said, man, that code never worked. And it, I just saw the first time the error after our production release. And it was a date data thing. Man. <laughs> What a typo, right? <laughs> a typo, right? Something that you look, you look saying, oh my God, one unit test would would have take that ever really soon. Because it was something that uh, makes all the bills and this validation wrong, you know? So, oh my God. <laughs> and I would say, I, I, I said to my friend, I say, man, and uh, uh, this never worked. And I say, oh my God, it looks like me. I always conf I always got confused with the words date and data. <laughs> <laughs> I say, oh my God. <laughs> I understand this confusion because in, in Portuguese, <laughs> yeah, especially in Portuguese, we do, we, we have the, the, the word data, data, that is dates. <laughs> but I totally understand him. But yeah, um, just uh, just want to say a quick hello here to Tomoe. Hey, Tomoe, uh, thanks for writing here. If you can, uh, 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 for anyone that is uh, watching this uh, this session, what is uh, if you can share to us uh, uh, where are you from and what is your biggest challenge with testing? Hey, welcome. I see your your message here, so welcome here. Please uh, share to us what is the biggest challenge that you have uh, about testing, about adding tests or creating tests in your projects. I have a lot of stories else, uh, also here, and and yeah, that's that's something interesting. I see a lot of these these days. I I, I see how this movement uh, of implementing tests first, uh, like the the test driven development, are much more popular. Uh, but I, I'm I'm from uh, old school where I, I have to uh, to fight to actually bring this uh, on on the on, on the project and and yeah I still have a lot of projects that is that has to implement uh, this culture inside the inside the team and still it's still a very uh, common uh, discussion right uh, so uh, actually I had I had the story. Uh, not, not, not so similar to, to Pedro, but um, uh, when 
we are trying to implement a test on the project, um, a friend of mine, of mine are bringing the new uh, uh, testing implementation and she was very happy and, and, and excited to bring it in. But uh, the whole team was, uh, she, she was, she was trying to evangelize the whole team and, and people there uh, are, uh, they, they agree with the benefits, but on the day, day to day, they are very familiar with the current process of developing and, and, and not prioritizing tests. And, and there, the challenge is not actually implementing tests, it's to change the culture, or, right? To change the, process, the whole process. And, and there, there was a much <clears throat> bigger challenge because uh, the whole process doesn't actually give the, uh, uh, make it easy. Uh, they have to implement the test, they, or they have to implement the code, and they have to de uh, deliver the code to, the, to another more senior people to review it. And if, they, if it's OK, they will pass. If not, uh, they, they will uh, bring back. And, th and they don't participate on this reviewing process. So it was much more challenging uh, pipeline to, of delivery to, 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 to drive. So yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's something that happens and still, still very, uh, very uh, common <laughs> these days. And, and I think it's a current challenge, actually. And I don't know, how, how about you, Moni? Do, do you have some, um, some uh, experience with, uh, with your team, with, with working with the team and, and, and creating tests uh, for the project? All the time, since I've started working in this field, at least since I've been aware that there's something called tests, because previously people would just not even give focus onto tests. But yeah, it's an ongoing thing. So there are lots of things that are actually uh, leading to this, right? For example, uh, many sessions ago, or at least a few sessions ago, I mentioned this uh, Joule's list of tests, you know, Joule, uh, what is it? Um, Joule on software, if you've heard of that, he has a list of 10 I... items that you need to fulfill. Um, I have actually, so what I will do is I'll, um, I will share it later on, but mm -hmm. uh, there is this person called Joule. He has written uh, 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 a lot of blog posts on, on this, in this whole space, not just testing, but so about software, but he, he came up with these 10 rules that one, one, any organization or any team must fulfill in order for them to be complete and in order to them to be uh, following the rules and, and, and delivering quality software. And one of those 10 rules is to have a CI CD system, a CI system, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And then testing and all that stuff. But then when that comes in, you also have, if you have CI running all the time and then you have your tests running all the time, then whenever something's introduced, like how Pedro was talking about uh, a feature by whether you call it data, data, or whatever, if it's introduced, if there are no if there are no tests, then the test coverage should kick in, right? Because that should also be part of the CI. Mm -hmm. So the, the test coverage will say you've just introduced code, but you have not introduced te test on it. And if you introduce test for that code, it will be reviewed, right? And then if that test doesn't make sense, then the human will catch it. So it, it should there should be double and triple uh, gateways or, or quality gates mm -hmm. that where code should be stopped. And if all of that still passes through and if something still gets introduced, then the other gate, which is the CI gate, that mm -hmm. should catch the code, right? Mm -hmm. And it should fail the build system. So somewhere the other line in the pipeline, it should get caught. So that, to set up that kind of a system and to follow those rules that Jewel on software says isn't really done in practice or hasn't been in the past, but of course it's changing now. But even now, people sometimes have a CI system, but it doesn't run overnight tests. It doesn't do, uh, it does only, it only does an on-demand test. That means if you push a commit, it runs tests. But mm -hmm. like an overnight test is necessary because so many things, there are so many moving parts to your software, isn't it? It's not just the tests that you've written and the code that you've written, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something uh, people are not doing. Then making sure that there's full business coverage on your test, you know, not just 100, it's not the 100% test coverage one should uh, seek for, mm -hmm. but it's 100% business requirements coverage. And all the tests that you need to write for that should be close to the amount of code or more than the code you've written. That means, mm -hmm. again, you don't write more code than it's necessary, right? So when you keep mm -hmm. a balance of that, it always be the test coverage and the business coverage will always be 100% or near 100%. Right. And then mm -hmm. the, the, the tolerance should be very low 
of failure. Some people say 80%, but I think the 20% gap can be harmful. So uh, anywhere from 1% to 5% tolerance, and in some cases, people don't have a tolerance. You need to have 100% coverage. That means every bit of code you've written, you need to have a, uh, a justifying test for that. Right? Mm -hmm. Or the code should justify that it needs to be there. And if it needs to be there, then it should justify what business requ requirements it's trying to fulfill. Right? Mm -hmm. So they all go hand in hand. And then all of that should be tested on demand and per commit or per, not per commit, but per, per request and also an overnight test. And in the overnight test, you're doing a lot more intensive tests, right? You're not just mm -hmm. doing your business requirements test. You're doing mm -hmm. the non-performance, uh, what is that? The non, um, the non-functional tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so those are the performance tests, the, uh, all the other tests, uh, quality of the, the pack, you name the tests that don't have to do the in infrastructure test, your mm -hmm. integration tests, right? So your mm -hmm. business requirements and all of that is completely covered. But when your system runs in, the, in, a, in an infrastructure environment mm -hmm. or in a, an environment, how would it behave? And, and you know, what, what, what are the, its requirements? Is it fulfilling those requirements? Those are different. The business doesn't care about that. The business wants you to have a working software that fulfills the business requirement and is available in production. So between that the production, there are all those other tests that you need to do. Security test, performance test. So those come all, they all come under the non-functional test because they're not part of the functionality, but they are part of your infrastructure functionality. Mm -hmm. right? So those, those and those extensive tests you run overnight and you do it every night, right? And in some organizations, they might even do it twice a day, right? The first set finishes, the second set starts because you have another infrastructure that's constantly doing the test. So when you have something like that, always checking, then even if a human being misses something, something will catch it, right? Mm -hmm. In a very rare case, it'll be missed out. So my point of saying all of this is there are very few organizations and very few teams that want to go to this extent. It's always a fight, as Hugo was mentioning, to get to want them to do that. They don't mm -hmm. see the value of it. They feel, oh, we are spend why are we spending so much time on it? You're spending so much time on it. So in future, you don't have to spend 10 times that time to debug and to fix and to, to you know, uh, rewrite stuff that could have been written rewritten written better in the first or second instance right right and and things like that so yeah that's my story about uh, an, an answer to your question Hugo. but i hope that kind of answers uh what you're what you're trying to ask me but that's why in a very short summary has been more or less an experience in different projects and different situations yeah. In some places where I had the ability, I would introduce all of this. I would set up like a project I did almost uh, three years ago during this time, actually, uh, just before the pandemic kicked in. Um, I was introduced to a system where they didn't, they didn't have a nightly build. They have a CI system that would only run when you push the code. They didn't have full test coverage. They thought they did TDD and they wrote the test and the tests are not readable at all. Uh, I had to rewrite the tests and delete all their tests. In fact, they are a senior uh, stakeholder tells me that actually, uh, can you rewrite the test and delete all our tests and rewrite in the way you've written it so that our tests have the language you've written it in? I mean, we're still using the same language, but like the, at least the tests are readable. Mm -hmm. So, and they did have a nightly build. When I introduced the nightly build, they realized that when one of the dependency version changed, their package broke, mm -hmm. right? Because the nightly build picked it up and had that not been in place, they would only discover it when their client was trying to install that package, that the package of theirs, right? That's a way, it's a little bit too late in the process if the client is installing your package and figures out your package is not compatible with the dependency package, right? So things like that. And, and there, was, there was test coverage was not, whatever test coverage they had, wasn't one and one with a lot of the functionality. So there was bugs in the system that the test didn't pick up. And so there was a whole lot of fixing of all of that. And they did mm -hmm. not know how to also, if they introduced a new feature, they did not know how to incrementally test all the different things, including in the test, they need to use data that they already use in their system, but of course, uh, uh, obfuscated. But anyways, because it was a private repository, they could still use their own data. They didn't do that. In their test, they were just doing some regenerating, some mock data, some, you know, if you use ABC mm -hmm. one, two, three all the time, it doesn't cover your business domain. The business mm -hmm. domain has some right like real names real addresses real values real numbers real amounts mm -hmm. and, and that, they that, have all of that isn't it that, that was what you rewrite in the code right you you changed that 
test that makes no sense to test that makes business sense. That's what you exactly, doing. exactly. But also the tests were written in in they were so obscure. The the whole setup was so obscure. They were doing loops, and in the loops they were doing assert. That's not how yeah. you do the assert. Oh you assert God. the whole object. You don't look. That, that, that's very interesting an effect that I see occurring also uh, on some some projects that when when people think about um, writing tests they want to be productive in writing tests so they try to do some uh, some way to like put in a for loop and try to okay I will test all cases in, in, inside one one unit one unit test and then, that's <laughs> and then the, the test itself become more complex than the business <laughs> the yeah. problem, and it was because they thought they did TDD and they didn't because the way they tested or they should have been testing it it should be a unit at a time and then the bigger unit and then the bigger unit and then the bigger unit like you know in, in layers so mm -hmm. but because you have to build it that way right if you build it like first and then you retrofit your test and you think you did TDD then your tests are going to be like that. It's going to reflect how you've built it. I didn't tell them that, but I didn't tell them, no, you guys didn't do TDD, but I, I made them realize by showing an example and they could see it from every commit because I, show, I asked them to actually study my commits on how I incrementally did every commit. And I showed them, if you just take this branch and you study all the commits, if you do your next feature using the same method, you should have full test coverage and you should also have the methodology methodology down. Right? And so I actually introduced a whole new feature into their package, first by making their package fully test covered, put it into a CI CD system, and I have all kinds of tests in there, slow tests, fast tests, acceptance tests. So the non-functional tests were also part of the package. Package wasn't very big, so you could do all of this in there. And mm -hmm. then the performance test, the, the very far, uh, heavy duty, big data performance test. So there were two types, performance tests and slow tests. So the performance tests were just checking the performance of the whole, but the slow tests were, were running on huge amounts of data and also on aspects of the system that would always run slow. So it was a combination of performance tests and large amounts of data. So, mm -hmm. and they, then they saw that the, there's a need for all of that and that all of those should run in the nightly build. So when you did a commit or a pull request or a uh, merge to master, it would run only the quick tests, the acceptance tests, and most of the tests, but not the fun non-functional tests. The non-functional test would only run overnight, including all the tests would run overnight, right? Mm -hmm. The quick, slow, the whole suite plus the slow tests and the performance tests, all of that would run overnight because now you have 12, 24 hours, or 12 hours, sorry, in hand, right? Mm -hmm. All of that would take an hour or two to run, which is fine. The, the other tests would take 15 minutes to run or less. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. So that's how it should be, isn't it? Uh, and so then they, and then, introducing badges into the uh, into the build system. So they can see that this 100% test covered and the build passed, right? So when they look mm -hmm. at, the, at the readme page, right? That's something, and then they would have for, for every branch. Uh, so, so things like that, because the CI systems these days give you those abilities, right? It, it reflects to you how much percentage coverage you have and how many, how, how many times and which builds pass, whether the last build that ran passed or not. So with that, you can see the health of your system. These are the things that would, in addition to doing your tests, would reflect what your tests have done. So which I, I have, this is my experience. I had to build this up. Now, the good thing is it gives me work to do and build these things up. If the client was all perfect, I wouldn't even have to do any of these things, right? For sure. But because the client <laughs> wasn't, I got it the opportunity to fill the gaps. For sure. How long did this took? Because uh, it looks like some they uh, had a big, budget for work. 30 days, but I could stretch the budget into three months because I only did a few days of work every week and I stretched that budget for three months. It but does. they were they were they they wanted it to be done in 30 days, but I said I don't do it that way because I had other projects going on as well. So I mm -hmm. could only do like a couple of days, two and a half days, three days sometimes a week. And they were happy with it because they were getting results from what what they were and they were some they were so busy with other projects that they had, didn't have the chance to catch up with my project that that even if i didn't produce work for 10 days they wouldn't be you know wouldn't be worried about it but i was always producing work every week uh -huh. but there was a 30 days project but actually i finished there were there was in three stages i finished the first stage in less than five days the second stage i took two weeks to finish and then the remaining time they told me please 
clean up our code base, use up all the remaining time. So there was a lot of time left. Almost 30% of the time was left because we didn't need the 30 days to do the project, you know. But they mm -hmm. said, remaining time, can you please use to refactor our code base, clean it up, rewrite all our tests, do all the documentation. So I left the whole thing in a place. And plus, I uh, researched a feature for them and I introduced that feature into their system in the exact way their whole system works, right? Because the feature was foreign, was like, it, had, it was like a paper that I had to read and I had to convert all the functionalities of the paper into their package features, mm -hmm. right? So then they could see what kind of a data do you input when you have a new feature like that? Which functions do you write? What do you, when do you write the test? When do you do the implementation? And, and also in, include in it the performance tests that I had already written for their package previously, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it is, this is all show by example because they can see every commit and every pull request because, you know, uh, Git, uh, what is it, GitHub, uh, or it was Bitbucket actually, sends out notifications, right? Every time you do a pull request. And you can see in the pull request or in the branch, all mm -hmm. the commits, so you can see what the changes are. So everybody mm -hmm. who's on that, on that repository can see what changes are going on and how to write code and how to write the test. So if something mm -hmm. was failing or passing on CI/CD, they could see. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is and they get nightly reports of the builds as well. The performance tests ran and all the logs are there. And I, my logs are very mm -hmm. verbose. So you could, you could see which test, how much time it took for which test, for which test it failed and for what reason it failed and what was mm -hmm. the data. Mm -hmm. All of this was missing in their package. Their tests would fail. You would not know why it failed. They did not have, you know, you have assert reasons, failure reasons that you could put on every assert. Mm -hmm. They never used any of those things. Uh, right. I had to embed that into. Mm -hmm. We have um, a lot of questions. Yeah, uh, we, we got some. We got some questions here from Tomoe. Uh, mm -hmm. Mocking data is very annoying. And, mm -hmm. and tell me about it. And and Tomoe right here. Um, about uh, I personally against this, uh, I would like if this is the place to raise controversy. Of course, you're very welcome to to raise your 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 point of view here, uh, Tomoe. And and yeah, I believe the largest incentive uh, on the part of developer to do this uh, actually it doesn't. Uh, I I can put the whole whole message here on the on the view, but uh, she said that to do this uh, through testing is just don't, not being fired. Because uh, you get more work in reality, you can do just fine uh, with uh, very descriptive logs and cloud watch. Great, great points. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there, there was well, well there was uh, very valid points here. Um, well, know, Pedro, do you want to start with that? Uh, what, what do you think about? Yeah, well, I think we have two two different problems here, right? Uh, first one, uh, mocking data is very annoying. Mocking data is very annoying, and we could discuss this uh, <laughs> for ma many times, right? We, uh, we have discussed about it right, right to you, uh, uh, last week. Last week, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and we, what, what was the main issue there? When you are writing code and you have lots of mocking to write that code, this is a bad smell. That's what we were discussing. And say, whoa, let, let, let me rephrase that. Well, wh wh why you need to mock data when you are writing tests? Well, you need to mock data because you have some dependency that's not exactly the part of the, of the code you want to stress out, you want to test, right? And you need to do that, to that part of the code that dependence of your code to be more uh, uh, to be on your control, I can say. So you can put that uh, that other dependency uh, uh, responding the way you want, right? That's why you mocking code. You mock code. If you have lots of mocks, it shows that your code has lots of dependencies. If you have lots of dependencies, your code is highly coupled right and we know we have that uh, two things we need to have in our codes right less coupled coupled and highly uh what's the name in english uh cohesive cohesive, cohesive right the highly cohesion and less coupled that's what we need to have in our code if you have many marks you have highly coupled 
So it sh it when you look at that, you say, "Oh my God, my code needs some refactoring. We, I need to make my code less coupled, right?" So when you have lots of mocking data, that's what's the point. And I see when it happens. When it happens, when you have lots of mocking, it's when you are not writing codes, when you are writing a feature, right? When you're not, when you are writing, you're just writing your feature, writing, 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 no testing at all. You write lots of things, and in the end, you go to your to your test and say, "Oh, <laughs> I have to mock many things." That's why people say, "Oh, TDD is important TDD, for me. What I need, ah, I I sent to you, you go a uh, a uh, 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 a tweet, Adam B Adam B and just send out here in Twitter. It was today, I think. I think I saw that tweet. I have see? seen that tweet. Yeah, and he said he asked me, "Why you write tests, right? I'm writing tests too." And many, um, oh, forty nine percent of the people said writing better code or get eighty percent coverage, move faster. I mean, not writing tests. So Twenty fifteen percent say I'm not writing tests. <laughs> right and that that's the point right uh you write tests to get your code better and not only business because business is the the main functionality your code must be right must have right but there are lots of other kind of tests and then and the tests show you the quality of your code as well so this first, the first paragraph is really interesting. I I will just start with it. If, if you wanna say something, many about mocking as well. Yeah. So uh, you know, one thing I wanted to add. Um, I don't know why Adam Bean didn't put in his tweet, and I will say that uh, yeah. one of the options should have been, uh, and there are many answers to it, is to ring fence. You write tests to ring fence your business requirement. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know what ring fence means, right? Meaning mm -hmm. set it in stone. That's set. what you're doing. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Ring fence also means to protect your business requirement so that the implementation that you've written that fulfills your business requirement is protected by the test. Mm -hmm. So if at all somebody or some reason the business requirement fails, it's the test that is protecting the business requirement will tell you that the business requirement is no longer valid because of it's not fulfilling this requirement that I'm checking for, right? So that is one of the reasons for um, writing tests. Better code, yes. is the, Better code is a side effect of writing tests, right? Also, not necessarily true. You could write the most pathetic code, right? But if you have the right test, if you have the right test, the tests are not checking if the code is correct or not, or the code is written in high quality or not. The tests are checking whether the code is doing the right thing or not, right? Right. Of course, right. you could be doing a lot of wrong <laughs> things in it, like a lot of system outs and a lot of side effects that you're not checking for. Mm -hmm. But if you're, che if you're checking for the business requirements and it's fulfilling that business requirement, whatever actions you're doing in between, before or after, and it's not being checked for, the test mm -hmm. doesn't know. Uh -huh. right? So that's that's what the test is doing. The test is actually checking and ring fencing your business requirement. Right. So like when I was learning. Uh, you know, I, I, there was a time when I took uh, a bit of a sabbatical and I went backwards and I said, I want to start from basics. One of the things I learned is that if you write acceptance tests or you write tests, it doesn't really matter what you write in your implementation. Of course, that's not necessarily how you should do it, because if even if your implementation changes and the tests are passing, that means it's still doing the right thing. Right. Provided, right. provided your tests. Are, uh, are, are seen and it has passed through the sanity check. It's not like how you're doing a reckless job where you're just letting the test check anything and you go and change your implementation code and the check never test never finds anything. No, that's what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. that's what. So that's why you should be able to change your implementation anytime. Because what if I was giving this example some time back to somebody or I don't know at this session. What if the hundreds of lines of code you've written can be replaced with one line of a library function, and you do that, and you delete your hundreds of lines of code. Your test should not break, right? And if your test doesn't break, is that a problem? 
if you can change, replace the hundreds of lines of code with that one line of library call, no, it's a great thing. Now you've moved all the responsibilities to the other package. Of course, there are again discussions on the on that decision as well, right? But that's a different conversation. Right? But the point is that the test, the, the implementation is abstracting layers and layers of business logic. And however you do that business logic is not the concern of the test. The test is only checking, are you doing the right thing? Right? So mm -hmm. that was an option I think I, it must have been missing in that tweet. But anyways, let's go on to the next question because this was this was on the mocking data. I don't want to add any more because then we won't have time to talk about the next points. But there's a lot sure. more things to talk about if you guys both agree with me on this one. <laughs> yeah, the, the other question was the, uh, yeah, this one. That the, Tomo is personally against tests because uh, in reality you can do just fine if you just ver if you if you just very descriptive logs and CloudWatch. This this phrase is interesting. <laughs> Good. Do you want to start it? with it, Pedro? Because I have a perfect answer for that one. Really? Oh, please. I, I'd like the perfect answer. I don't know if it's a perfect answer. <laughs> See, here's, I, here's what I say. Here's what I say. There's no right or wrong, right? It's all relative. If you can replace your test with something that does exactly and gives the exact or even more or better value than what tests give, and you're able to automate it, you're productive, you're pragmatic, and you're delivering value, your team is moving faster, then please introduce that and then tell all those people who wrote all the test related design patterns or methods or uh, processes or best practices, tell them about that thing you just discovered, provided it should do the same value or more what tests do, right? So go ahead. You have the freedom to go and do what you want to do. CloudWatch or uh, SeaWatch or Baywatch, doesn't matter, right? Go and do it. Or descriptive logs, yeah, using... Splunk and all that stuff. And these days you have the Elk stack, which will read the logs and give you nice Grafana graphs and all that and alerts and all that. So please go and do it. But then make sure that your team is running faster. Every time you introduce a new process or a feature, nothing's breaking. You're telling about, you're, you're able to measure code coverage. You're able to measure business requirements coverage. So we have nothing against these two statements. You're not going to fight you at all. You have the freedom now and maybe you have put a rope around your neck by putting these statements here because if you are not able to deliver it, then then you might have to go back to tests. Yeah. But if you can org organize and architect this descriptive logs and CloudWatch and many other tooling or any other tooling in such a way that it delivers the same value as tests or, or better value than tests, mm -hmm. no problem, right? I think both of you will agree with me and everybody else will agree with me that, right? So that's that's yeah. what I've learned and we've all actually learned is that it's you can replace one thing with the other, but the thing that you're replacing it with should then now deliver the exact same value or better value, not deteriorate in value. And if it deteriorates in value, there's a limit of deterioration of value, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot have all the good things you get out of the previous thing that you had suddenly gone. You cannot do without it, right? Yeah. It's the same for us, right? For example, we moved from Restream to Wave, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it a better choice or a less better off choice? Are we getting the same value or less value? We mm -hmm. know this from our last two prod uh, broadcasts that there are some pros and cons, but it's not a, a multiple steps backwards, right? Right. It's maybe maybe we're losing one or two small things, mm -hmm. but ninety five percent of the things we want, is, but we cannot have that with tests. The things that tests do, we cannot have that. We cannot go backwards. If it's in some organizations, you cannot go backwards five percent. That's a big number in some mm -hmm. organizations, right? Like in yeah. in in organizations where you have to be like finance, for example, I'll say, and and many other organizations, yeah, uh, space, finance, space, uh, you you name it. Uh, uh, aeronautics uh, industry. Right? You know, where everything is it is. Everything is critical. 1% <laughs> is critical. So you cannot replace tests from their system and say, I'm going to put it on cloud uh, or I'm going to put ABC and PQR and, and that's going to do the job of tests because I'm against tests or I don't think tests are valuable. Mm -hmm. exactly. And an organization may have 
10, 20, 30, 40,000 tests. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Tomo uh, uh, <laughs> agreed with your answer, Vani, but well, well, well said here. Um, <laughs> one thing that is very important uh, always uh, is uh, if it's delivering value or not, right? So uh, even for tests, uh, that, that is moments that, that it makes sense, uh, that may uh, move your team to create those tests or, or not. So uh, all, 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 I think... Uh, uh, as it is in when we do trade-offs in architecture, I think for these decisions are big decisions that uh, if, if that delivers value, uh, the problem might be, might, should be done. So I think, Pedro, do you want to add something? I, I, I see you raising your hand. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is a really, really interesting uh, discussion because, well, uh, in my, my current job, for example, sometimes we do that, right? We have... Uh, we have good monitoring, right? Uh, we are using Datadog here. Uh, we have descriptive blobs. We have many, many, many kinds of alarms coming from it. We have lots of analysis coming from it. We have lots of dashboards coming from it, right? And so, so in in this case, we can have a. We we could see many of the aspects, uh, many aspects of the system. Uh, just by doing, uh, uh, by getting from the monitoring, right? But for example, that that case that I that I that I told in the beginning, that case that I told in the beginning, I had all these things, right? Uh, I had the unit, I have unit tests, I have integration tests, I have acceptance tests, uh, uh, end-to-end tests, I have good monitoring, right? And even though I got, I got, I had lots of troubles to get the the delivery of this feature because of one bug that was that was there in the in the monitoring, you know. So the I I can say that using using that way of uh, uh, without doing without tests in this case would bring me the same value, you know, as many said. So in that case, particularly, I'm talking about me, okay, Tomoe, as we are saying, many, uh, as as many saying that we don't need to, if we can keep up with the value, is okay, right? In that case, I couldn't, and I was me, my and the 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 owner of the company, <laughs> looking, uh, 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 trying to get the, that thing work, you know. And in, and in, in the after hours, it's not it's not bringing value, right? So in my uh, what what I <laughs> what I would love to have it was not me that that introduced that bug, someone else. And we have lots of people writing code, right? We cannot we can I I cannot say that I will know all the parts of the code as well. The, at, at that moment, I was the engineer that was available at that time, you know. It would be any anyone else, right? So that's the uh, that in this case, I think uh, I think we should have uh, a better test coverage because we are we were not testing that business. That is especially important business requirement we had there. That was the validation of the user can do this thing or not. Man, this is something that uh, uh, people from product to write in the paper. Oh, the user must must be able to do that, and it was not tested, right? And I could see that in the monitoring. I could see any dashboard saying that it was a three months code, right? So that's uh, uh, this this point. This kind of things uh, is difficult to say. Oh, it's bringing more value because, well, uh, how much it was, how much it cost to not have that small test now at that moment right I had a I had another problem uh, some time ago with uh, 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 it, it is inter- that, this this story I will talk uh, I'll talk in my my talk uh, uh, in TDC yeah? I had a, 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 a similar problem in, we had a, a, a external API integration we have right 
and everything was okay. We have tests, we have mocking, we have contract, right? And then suddenly, in a weekend, it's, it starts failing. But it was not failing completely, failing like, oh, it's been not getting 500 errors. No. It was just in cases that it should not validate, it was validating the users. Right? And it, it say, oh my God, what, what, what was wrong in that case? It was just uh, the, the external API changed a little the contract. And the system was understanding that, but misunderstanding understanding that incorrectly. It was not a error because it was a error, it would be great. But it was not. It was understanding incorrectly. Well, so what, what should I do then in that case? There is no... Uh, 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 in that case, it, it's difficult to say, oh, I need to have, in this case, a good monitoring would be better, right? A good monitoring would be better. And then when I discover that problem with good monitoring, I need to in, in, enhance my tests to not having that again, right? So I think both things need to work. Uh, yeah, I think I think I think I was going to get to that as well. That you need to have the best of both worlds. Exactly. So I think we have this tendency of saying, "Oh, uh, we'll only put all our eggs in this basket. We won't do that. We won't put much attention there." But then what happens is that you don't take advantage of the other thing that gives you advanced insights that this thing cannot give you insights. Like all this unit test, integration test, acceptance test, they have their limits. They don't run on production all the time. On production, you have monitoring and observability tools, logs, and those are your eyes and ears of your system. And there you set conditions and alerts so that if certain things happen, which is outside the scope of your functionality, because these are non-functional uh, non -functional tests or non-functional checks that you do on your system. Which your your tests you know your tests of course you can learn from the observations which you which, what you were just mentioned earlier you can learn from your observations of your current uh, behavior of your system and then decide maybe I should put some more tests here so that what it's doing now here it shouldn't be doing because I think I'm observing it's probably not failing now but in, in at, with a, some certain other combination it'll fail why don't I go and check my code so it doesn't even do that and and, and change my implementation as well so it doesn't do this so that I don't have this future thing. So one helps the other but you've got to have the best you've got to have both the checks. You've got to have the pre-production checks which is all the tests we're talking about, the test pyramid and then you have the post-production checks which is the monitoring and observability and the combination of the two is more complete than just having one or putting all the weight on one and not having the other. Exactly. Oh, very cool. Um, I think I think I was let <laughs> a few to, to add here. I don't know if um, I, I have much, much to add here. I just want to say uh, Ohio to Channel Finro D and, and, and say hello to Mario Torres. Uh, so if you also have any, uh, what is uh, any biggest challenge for testing with testing uh, in your project and want to share here, feel free to do so. We are here uh, uh, answering and interacting with Tomoe uh, point of view here about, about testing, right? I hope Tomoe that these answers uh, could help you uh, think about uh, how you can actually uh, help uh, in your project or also bring a new idea, I think, that would, that would be very interesting uh, if you have success with that. Um, one thing that comes in my mind that will be challenging is to actually bring some uh, new practice and seems uh, as, as the same as the, the team that I was talking before, it's always a challenge. So the challenge not become just implementing some practice is to uh, make it uh, accepted by the team and actually bring consistency with that practice for your team. So that would be 
uh, always a big challenge for any any anything new that you can bring you will bring to your to your team. Um, so uh, Pedro, how about um, so, uh, talk a little bit about creating external external uh, se- mocking external services testing for or what do you think? Well, well, I, I think <laughs> the, I think we are good <laughs> for today, right? Uh, yeah, uh, we we are in almost in, uh, in the, <laughs> in the yeah. end of yeah. our session, right? Maybe we can we can talk about uh, uh, our books and. Okay, you worry. Yeah, yeah, you right. I was worried because I seen I seen the time here, and we are really close to the to the end also. So uh, yeah, uh, I love it. I love the the, the discussion. Special. I love the the, the the comment of Tomoe, and it, I would like just to add something in Tomoe in Tomoe comment that is say uh, testing is just not to not being fired. <laughs> I. That, I think this is interesting to to to, to, to comment. At least I, I, I'd like to add some uh, uh, one thing. Uh, when the, the, we have a problem when we have when we have when we have when, when everything works, we are okay, right? But when it's not, right? For example, when we have a bug that makes the the company lose lots of money. Right, because that's the point, right? About money. Uh, then it became a problem, and you said, "Oh, I'm right test just to not being fired." And then I write tests. Uh, if something wrong, oh, I read. I have written tests, so it's not my it's not my problem. You know, uh, uh, it's uh, when we have. Uh, do, do, do we have some kinds of uh, contracts? We have some kinds of difficulties that uh, that makes make the test not only uh, uh, not only something to make our code make sure our code works, but to make sure we have done everything to make sure our code our code works, right? So it's not exactly just not being fired. But exactly to to make sure to to put to put the value of making sure that and this value is that exactly I'll say oh if you have a bug well, you're gonna lose lots of money I have a, a, a I have a, 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 a we have an, a, a really famous example in NASA about the the the, the, the rocket the, the, I think you ever everybody knows about this this example I just summary summarize here. Uh, they are or, 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 or they are trying a rocket, and they the rocket must be going must go in a, a specific direction. When they launch it, it was okay, and then it starts to go into a different, totally different place, and then they had to to explode that. And they discovered what happened. One component was in miles, and other component was in kilometers. And they are sending info to each other. One in kilometers of miles. Only that. It how how, how many millions of dollars <laughs> we lost? <laughs> the, the 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 U.S. tax they lost at that moment <laughs> in that day. Yeah, you know. So I have shared I have shared an article here related to yeah this is the one um, it's not the exact one probably you're talking about maybe it is the one uh, uh, but it is it uh, says yeah, seven, 370 million dollars lost but it is because of that specific situation i'm not talking about i don't think it's talking about the one you're talking about but yes i've heard of the one you're talking about as well but the point is the same right yeah the, the point, point is, is the same, same. it's yeah. the same uh, 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 they they didn't make sure they didn't do everything to make sure all, all, all the systems are working together, right? Yeah. So, so, so actually, and then add, so, someone yeah. gonna someone get got fired? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if someone got fired, but you know, in a high caliber project like that, the failures of a of a project is not uh, subjected to teams. They go back and see how they can do it better, right? Because these are you're talking about very smart people from planet earth right these are not 
just a team they put together and if it didn't perform they'll disband the team and they'll fire the people right because if they fire those people where are they going to get a replacement for them they are like the creme de la creme of this it's really hard to find the people and put a team together like that of you know just like the people who are behind the hydron collider it's a 10 billion dollar project right the all the scientists and phd's who are who have been working uh, there's hundreds of them right to put a team together like that to build the hydron collider that's in cern it's not a joke and you know it, it you can't you can't be uh, uh, you cannot be uh, you know i don't know how they share the news that you guys didn't do this well but how they put it but they must have ways to let them know that yes we, it has a, it has been a failure let's go and look at what we did wrong because they are these are scientists who do experiments right experiments can go wrong right so then we can see which variables when and they can see which variables they didn't they didn't pay attention to which variables were moving parts and which variable they had under control again i am not i'm not well versed with any of that so i don't know how they went about uh, dissecting the problem uh, but that's the, the, the see what coming back to what you're saying about tests is so tests are uh, two in today's world tests have two or three more than two values maybe one of them is to verify and validate that what you've been asked to do you have done it right so you validate to yourself but also because it's written in code it's concrete right so anybody else can read it and and verify and validate yes actually what they asked us to do is also done not just that now the second value is you put it on an automatic system it'll constantly keep checking right if you didn't have tests and you just had those two people who could read the code and say uh, yeah the code is doing exactly what you had asked us to do what if those two people no longer can read the code or they don't work in the organization or they don't they're not part of that department how you going to validate that that code now actually does what it does because even if one line of code changes but what if the code doesn't change is the data that now that's going to the code is changed right so looking at the code doesn't help right you couldn't see yeah the code does what it's supposed to do because you can't iterate through all the data that it can possibly munch but now the test can actually the moment the data changes or anything else other than the code and the data changes the test will trigger and say it's not doing what the business is expecting it to do this you cannot have possible if you don't have a piece of code called test checking for the checking against the business code that's the value of a test two values right it ring fences that's what i was saying right in the beginning it ring fences your business requirement but also it ring fences by constantly checking against your business requirement it's yeah. a quality gate perfect perfect well so i think we are uh, out of time now uh, i think it's a time to actually share uh, our books of the of the session um so who wants to start today your name's on top there right you go okay no no it's fine <laughs> so, all right so i'm going to i'm going to share the most uh, talked about book in the world of testing and he's a very popular gentleman ken peck and so i'm going to share his book pd by example by ken peck this was my first testing book i ever read and it is super complete from the sense of how to write tests how to write test driven code Uh, and that book has got great ex- examples and exercises and walks you through in a very incremental process from simple tdd to you know the 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 red green refactor steps uh, all the way to more complicated ones so uh, i highly recommend having a copy of this book i have a copy of the book somewhere in the shelf there uh, i've been through it uh, and i would say going through it multiple times really strengthens your your test test writing skills Uh, and hopefully test reading skills as well uh, but that this is just a starting point so yeah with that i'll pass it on to the two of you i'm sure you both have some books oh yeah. martin fowler integration test great one better than the other yeah, yeah. no it, it, uh, my sorry go ahead go ahead Pedro. go Can on I, yeah. oh sure yeah uh, mine is not a book but um, uh, it's just, it's a post on my oh, blog followers post. blogs but much much following blog yeah ah, martin followers blog is something really really incredible right there is lots of fantastic piece of information there i can i can say to everybody say man 
if you need something, go there, find the, the topic, take a take a read, and then you can take a look in everywhere. Because Martin Fowler is some a, a, a fantastic a fantastic guy in our field. And this yeah. in, in integration test one is really insightful because there is there is a, a discussion about how to write the integration tests in a in a good way when we have a lot of different services and we have external APIs. You know that uh, that uh, blog post is really really insightful on that. I suggest everyone to read it if you are working with. I send out APIs that I think you are, because <laughs> every everyone is working <laughs> with external APIs, right? So that's that's my suggestion. Great. Uh, uh, before sharing my my book, I want to uh, add uh, to share here that Tomoe, that is a good point. Uh, Test help new corners. Say a quick hello to Max. Hey, Max. Uh, I hope you are doing well. Hello, Max. Hello, Max. Great. And, uh, and and yeah, Tomo uh, also add here. It was really insightful talk and give us suggestion about uh, topics for the next session. Uh, we do appreciate a lot Tomo to give uh, such uh, suggestions. I think that uh, that are great topics to talk about, and and hope to see you uh, uh, there as well. And to bring more to bring more uh, questions or, or 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 bring some discussions here. It's a great. Uh, it, it was a great experience here to have. Your participation here, and uh, I, 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 I incentivate everyone uh, watching us to do the same. Uh, bring, bring your questions here. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure here. I'm sharing a lot, uh, the links on the chat, but I think uh, at least for me, uh, looks like uh, the, 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 the message that I send here on the chat is not uh, being delivered for, for the destinations. Probably uh, some some bug inside the inside our wave video platform. Maybe suggest to to implement some unit tests about it. <laughs> maybe helpful. Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe we could ask our audience to confirm if they are receiving the messages we are sending to the community. If, you, if like any of you can, yeah, a great great idea, Money. If any any anyone that's watching can ask uh, oh, actually feedback us. With if you are getting the the links of the books that I'm I, I'm actually sending all the links here we discussed it today uh, on the chat if you're seeing there um, and if you can just <laughs> uh, type here yes I'm I'm receiving I will will be super helpful my book for today uh, I I shared it before but I think it connects a lot with the topic uh, it's working effectively uh, with legacy code. Uh, uh, as we are talking about tests, uh, it's a great book if you're working with some uh, existing um, um, application or system that has legacy code that doesn't have the unit test or any, any kind of test. It does give you a lot of insights how to start implementing it. Because in reality, we, uh, we, we, it's very difficult to get a greenfield uh, project that you start from zero and you can, oh yeah, let's implement TDD. In most of the cases, we, we just start in an, uh, some application that already exists, and most of them, if they have some, uh, they, they they most of them don't have tests implemented. So there are a lot of challenges uh, that is not uh, that that is not written on getting started tutorials that we see on that unit test uh, tutorial. So yeah, that's a great book that that gives you a very uh, real <laughs> real use cases for for this kind of uh, of problems. So I think, yeah, today, that's it uh, for today. I hope uh, you enjoyed, especially Tomoe, with the suggestions and, and the answers here uh, from our specialists. And, and yeah, keep following us. Uh, we have the channel on the YouTube, and, and, and there is all, all, the, all, all the playlists with, the, with all the content here. And we'll be talking uh, with you guys, not the next Monday, but the next one. We, uh, we skip one, one week and, uh, and keep our sessions. So see you guys. Thanks, Pedro. Thanks, Mani, for all the insights. And yeah, <laughs> we'll keep uh, talking. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. See you, everyone. Bye bye. See you, everyone. Take care. Bye.
Um, can you hear me? I yep, I can why. hear you. The screen is still showing starting in zero. Yeah. Uh, Maybe if you refresh your browser, it might take you to the. Let me 